For USCFootball.com, I'm Keely Orr here with Dan Weber for instant analysis of USC's third practice of fall camp. And today was the first practice that the Trojans put on shoulder pads, so we got to see some hitting today. Um, but what were your general impressions of today, Dan? I tend to agree with Clay, uh, who said, I'll take 24 my, more like this. Uh, I don't think they, they got, they were competitive. They really, uh, you know, went after one another. They made it hard on the, you know, the one thing everybody's trying to see is, what about the quarterbacks? They made it hard on the quarterbacks. They came with a lot of, you know, a lot of blitzes. We didn't see uh, all that much in the way of, uh, you know, missed assignments or, or guys just, uh, you know, getting overwhelmed. We still saw a team that looks like they're going to be able to, you know, really come and get the quarterback. Uh, they didn't have any turnovers. I think that was a good thing. We saw uh, JT Daniels, you know, realizing how much the game has speeded up and still made a lot of really good throws. I mean, he's mm -hmm. just got a an awfully good arm, but we're still uh, we're seeing Jake, um, uh, Jack Sears, and uh, and Matt Fink both clearly have been encouraged. If you don't like what you see, take off and run. Use yeah. your athleticism. Be quick. Be decisive. And they both, uh, you know, did some really nice things, uh, you know, with the ball. And and uh, they still are, are throwing the ball pretty well. Uh, neither one of them, you know, probably is going to throw the ball uh, anywhere near as you know as well as uh, as JT. But, you know, I think the, I like the coaching element where they're really, really encouraging them to take off and, and use their athleticism because those two guys can run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think it was especially a good day for Jack Sears. He threw a touchdown pass to Joshua Mortebebe and also scored one with his feet. Uh, when we talked to uh, quarterbacks coach Brian Ellis, he said that Jack Sears is one of the guys of the quarterbacks who's improved the most um, during this offseason. Well, I think, and I, I asked him, uh, what do you think, what's the big factor? Because he said they've come along so far since spring. Yeah. We all remember spring. And I said, do you think it was, uh, you know, the arrival of JT? And he said, absolutely, of course, absolutely. Uh, they're not dumb. No, they know. Everybody knows. Uh, you know, this is, this really matters. Uh, you know, every, you know, every play uh, matters a lot. And, uh, you know, there's no, uh, you know, you can't take off and you can't, you know, not, not do your best and uh, and it's working. I think it's really worked well for all of them. I'm really impressed with uh, how the quarterbacks have answered compared to how difficult the spring was. Yeah. It was a rough day at center. Tol Obadon had some trouble getting some clean snaps, but when asked about it, Clay Hilton said that he's not particularly worried. Uh, this is the first time that Tol Obadon has gone live since the fall, since he was out during spring. And Hilton also said that once you get a ball in your hand, uh, it, it becomes a reality. So he said it's, it's a learning curve for, for Toa getting back into it, but he wasn't too concerned about it. Yeah, I mean, Toa did snap all spring, but not in pads. Yeah. So... And that changes. And, you know, it's not just in pads, but it's live pads against a pretty good defense, and they're coming. Uh, so uh, if it's a problem by next week, then then they're going to have to address it. Yeah. I think they're just letting today go as just one of those things. And uh, we'll see. I mean, Toa hasn't, hasn't played that much center. I mean, he's yeah. mostly been, you know, guard and tackle. Uh, so, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, it could be, you know, certainly going to be an issue if you've got a blitzing defense coming after you and you're trying to play shortstop and you know catch the ball in the short hop you just can't do it i think the quarterbacks actually handled it pretty well yeah. uh considering yeah. but uh uh yeah that's gotta that's gotta change mm -hmm. It was the offensive day today, so we got to talk to offensive players. The first time we got to talk to the majority of them since the spring. Uh, I know you talked to a lot of people. What were the the good nuggets that you got from from guys? Well, I like it that Stephen Carr. So absolutely, totally couldn't be any more pain-free. It doesn't think about it doesn't, in the factor. And even though he looks to me like he's uh, slimmed down a little bit, he yep. said he's still between 210 and 215. So uh, he's a lean cut, you know, if he's near 215, uh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, Chuma Doga, and it doesn't, it's not obvious with him, but he's, uh, he's up 10 pounds. He's at 305. He didn't ever play over 295. So uh, said he'd been drinking a lot of, uh, you know, that uh, canned uh, uh, powder uh, <laughs> stuff. Uh, and uh, he said it's worked. Um, think about, uh, I think Coach Drevno talked about, um, he thought, like most of us, that Marquis Step is quicker, lighter on his feet, changes direction better than he would have guessed. And we all kind of agree that we didn't necessarily think a 230-pound kid coming out of Indianapolis, sort of a Midwesterner and all of that, 
might have the explosiveness and the bounce and the uh, change of direction that he has. He had a uh, ripped off a you know 35 yard touchdown up the middle, and uh, he was very impressive. So uh, so from those two uh, two running backs, and then and Clay talked about Aka Cedric and just can't say enough good things about him as a senior and the shape he's in and all the things he can do. So I think the running backs, uh, when they when you talk to him about having a new coach, the thing they like about uh, Tim Drevno is they'll all mention the first thing is teaching him blocking yeah. and the second thing is how good he is uh, going over film so this is the, you know the offensive coordinator in him uh, so uh, you know kind of a, a good feel about uh, about the run game today. Mm -hmm. Now on the other side of the ball you and I actually got a close look at the defensive backs during a, a po portion of today's practice. Ronnie Bradford really seemed hands-on, um, seemed to be working on things that obviously he's referencing in film or some specific example from prior seasons uh, but they really worked on their hands and scoring up the receivers and it was pretty impressive um, the effort that Ronnie Bradford has been putting in so far. Yeah I thought the detail, the emphasis on detail, I mean they, you know, they start off with the, working with the hand fighting and then they started off. Then they went to uh, shadowing, uh, shadowing, you know, your guy, but with your hands behind your back, so you're not grabbing him and running with him and staying with him. Uh, I, you know, they're kind of breaking down uh, the coverage, and it's interesting that uh, you know, Coach, uh, who's now listed as an analyst for USC, former uh, uh, you know Dallas Cowboys head coach Dave Campo, is out there, very, you know, close observing uh, everything that's going on, and. They happen to be right in front of us, so we get to see and compare it to to the spring or to last fall. Yeah. And the the level of detail and the amount of coaching that's going on and the amount of stopping things quickly and making a correction or making a you know an adjustment or whatever is at a, at a, it's at a different place from what it was last year. I do think last year was hurt a little bit because it was hard to to somewhat coach a, a, a team that or Jack Jones was one of your starting corners. He just wasn't maybe always open to some of the coaching. And this, these guys seem to, yes, sir, yes, you know, and they do it. And uh, really like their attitude about it and uh, love the way Ronnie is going about it. Mm -hmm. As far as injuries go, Cam Smith and Akili Ross, who pulled their hamstring or not tweaked their hamstring, I'll say, uh, on Saturday, held and said they would be reevaluated today. They sat out of practice and watched, um, but USC did get some players back today. Yeah, uh, uh, we saw Jake Russell, who's got a stress fracture, running, uh, you know, running pass patterns. Uh, Randall Grimes is running pass patterns with, I'm not even, I think it's a knee, but I'm not absolutely certain, uh, you know, what what his issue was, and Jacob Lichtenstein was back today. So and Jay Tafelli, Jay Tafelli was back getting first team reps. That's right, Jay. Yeah, so four of the six yeah. who were uh, of last week. So that's uh, that's a good thing, um, and it's a good thing it's happening this week. Clay tends to agree, and I tend to agree, is uh, that this is really a, an important week of practice. Yeah. Five out of the six days will be in pads, two full pads days, uh, one scrimmage, and six straight days of practice. I think this might be the most important week of the year, uh, so uh, or certainly preseason. And uh, I, I, it's good. The more guys you got ready, uh, you know, the better. But uh, and uh, another D, D lineman that was in there all the way uh, at, at nose tackle with Marlon Tuipulotu. So yeah. you're getting these guys back, and they don't look like they're having you know having to baby them or do anything else. That they're just throwing them out there, and uh, that's a good good sign. Yeah, well you just took my next point. I was oh. going to say that <laughs> Helton emphasized how much the depth and how important this week is. Um, two full two full pads days and a scrimmage in the Coliseum on Saturday, so that will be exciting. Why do you think this week is so important? Well, I mean, he talked about, sounds like, you know, a broken record with me, is, we, you know, they need physicality. Yeah. And somebody said, well, how do you get physicality? He said, what you saw today. That's, phys that's what we have to do. Team uh, you know, 11 on 11, going full speed, uh, you know, putting the pressure on as much as we can and, you know, dealing with it. And uh, that's the only way you can do it. And we've probably screamed that about a thousand times. And uh, I'm glad somebody agrees because uh, that's the way to get better is you've got enough players to make the other guy play better. Yeah. And you have to do that. And if you're coming hard at them, uh, you know, they have to get better. I mean, you know, it'd be shocking if they didn't get better. And today was a was a day that I think at the end of practice you think they're better than when they started practice because of what happened in practice. 
can't ask for any more than that. And it was football. They what they were, you know, they didn't have uh, they didn't have full pads on, but it looked like football, it sounded like football, and they played it like it was football. And you can't ask for anything more than that. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for Monday's fall camp practice. For Dan Weber, I'm Keely Orr. For more, check out uscfootball.com.